Hello everyone, this is Santosh and uh, Frank from Deloitte and we are here to uh, share our experience uh, with OTM fleet management and all the digital enablement that we had like IoT and then the sensor based devices and the other uh, digital capabilities that we, when coupled with the fleet management, what are the benefits uh, that we are going to get and uh, we wanted to discuss uh, our case study. We basically, this is uh, the Deloitte experience that we had to transform our client business to OTM fleet management and how this uh, sensors and IoT devices is going to help them uh, solve their business challenges and problems and then how we are going to uh, reduce the operation cost, like maintenance cost and then increase the revenue basically. So, let's get started. So, in this session, we wanted to talk about, as I said, like the US retailer, they are uh, not a referenceable client because as we speak, there is a project going on still and they are public listed company. So probably in the next uh, SIG, we will be bringing our, our clients also along with us uh, and we will make a presentation. And then, the introduction to IoT. So what does IoT means and uh, how are we going to make best use of this technology to transform the data into an information and then information into an analytics and then make key decisions with the information that we have collected. So we are going to see that the frame of the Deloitte framework which we suggest is the best way to use the data collected from the IoT devices. And then the next is the digital enablement. So what are the digital uh, opportunities, capabilities that we have, which, which uh, service offerings that it is going to enable and then what are the benefits that we are going to get out of these digital enablements. And then the final slide would be the maturity model. So we are going to talk about the implementation approach. What is the best way of getting the return of investment for the implementation of fleet management and OTM along with digital capabilities. But basically there are three things that we are talking about. OTM itself is like has a huge capability and out of which fleet management is one module. And on uh, fleet management, how are we going to use the IoT devices and sensor in order to bring the benefits from it. And then uh, we also have an appendix to have like more detailed discussion of the benefits that we are going to uh, discuss and we will uh, not discuss about that but it can be used as a reference like in order to understand more for, for those people who are like new to fleet management and then the uh, digital enablement it would be easy for them to understand so select the guide. So, here we are talking about a retailer, so I wanted to give a background about the retailer, what they do, what kind of industry, I mean what kind of uh, business they have. So basically, uh, they have convenience store in US, they are centered around the Midwest area, this is the total operation of uh, the retailers. They are a uh, new retailer which they actually established like 10 years or like uh, 20 years back, slowly growing. And for past five years, uh, they have been growing in different business, like they also have a gas station along with the convenience store. So when we talk about fleet management, there are like different types of fleet they operate. So one of the fleets is the uh, trans, uh, transporting the goods from the DC distribution centers to the retail uh, stores and from DC to DC. So there are like two different uh, types of uh, shipments that we see. And then the second one was the uh, transportation of uh, highly flammable liquids like uh, gas because they, they transport the gas to, uh, gas to their uh, retail stores and then it gets distributed from there. And uh, the third one is the spare parts. Spare parts uh, for a gas station and the, can, the retail store is like huge. So they have a very, uh, US has a very regular maintenance schedule, regulations. So they have like an operating uh, spare part trucks where they have the necessary tools and uh, the spare parts along with that. So the technician will be driving in and around uh, the warehouse and then retail stores. So there are three types of fleet and all of all the three types are privately owned. So they are not using any 3PLs because uh, they think the commitment is higher when they use in-house uh, products instead of uh, letting it uh, handled by 3PLs. So and uh, they, they are learning, so they, they have their own fleet management, they have their own uh, lessons learned from the previous uh, uh, logistics solution that they have been using. And uh, Ruan is the 
uh, carrier which is uh, actually helping them for planning their loads as of now. So that they wanted to bring even that feature in inside Oracle, inside like uh, OTM so that they can be self-sufficient and they can operate uh, their fleets on their own. So that is their vision. And uh, as we always start with the business goal, so the once we go to a client and then talk to them and then like uh, there was a need and uh, we understood they are having a very aggressive growth plan, target uh, growth, growth plan of uh, multiplying the number of stores that they have to have nearly like 100 to 200 percent in five, five years. Basically they want to expand the retail stores across US because right now it's centered in the mid Midwest area that is mainly because of the distribution centers. They have like two requirements on the location. One is that if I had to expand the market, like where is the strategically best position for me to have a warehouse? That's the first requirement. The second thing is that when they identify new warehouse, then they wanted to identify the locations which is surrounding the warehouse to expand. So for example, they cannot just open up retail stores in California because they are operating from the Midwest region. So that is why uh, positioning the warehouse which is distribution center has become critical for them. And uh, when they have a target of like 100% increasing the store, it's going to be very critical to position the DC for them. That's the number one uh, issue or like uh, it's a good issue because they are in a growth plan. The second one was the increased regulation. So the FDA in US, it's a uh, the regulation for actually food. So when the food is out of the manufacturer, so until it reaches the end customer, there is a regulation which needs to be followed. So we uh, had to be very cautious of that. And then one, one of the requirement is that like uh, the way they are going to handle their uh, food products, especially when it is out of the warehouse and then until it reaches uh, the retail store refrigerators, how are we going to carry those things? And we need a proof for whatever we do. So that is. Uh, the, the amount of time that they take in order to collect those informations and then present a report, it's actually is, uh, uh, taking a lot of time for them. So they are looking for a solution which is like they can just generate a report out of a single uh, source of truth, like one system where they can do operation planning, they can track the uh, fleets and uh, get the reports of all the sensor details and the temperature and everything. This will help them to operate efficiently. So that was uh, the second business challenge and the third business challenge is that they have a big question in their mind whether their fleet size is right or not, they don't know. Because they are, uh, sometimes the fleet utilization is high, sometimes fleet utilization is low. So they wanted to understand, okay, do I have the right number of fleets for my business? That's the biggest question. So they wanted a solution for all these uh, three business challenges. As a background, they are $8 billion company. Yeah, impressive like 20 years growing from like one store into 2000 stores and they are like into number of markets and uh, number of employees is uh, 38,000 and this is just Midwest we are talking about they don't operate globally and that's a huge number and uh, this is the sh shipments per week so I wanted to talk about their shipment model so they actually have a like a milk brand model so they have a specific days uh, of the week to have the shipments to particular location. For example, um, their, their main warehouse is in like, uh, let's say in Midwest in Chicago. They would have every Monday, the fleets they wanted to have covered till Wisconsin. And then every Saturday, they wanted to go to Ohio to have their uh, fleets uh, delivering the, replenishing the goods in the retail store. So they had a milk run. And uh, this is their current situation and this is their challenge and that's their vision, business goal and this is where we started. So how are we going to solve all this problem? So we have three use cases which we proposed and then been accepted and we are actually in the process of implementing these things. The first one is the optimization model. So right now, they are using Ruan services, as I said, to find the strategically best position to open a new warehouse because they share their growth market. Right now, the immediate growth market is towards the Ohio part. So they, they share their what they want and then they wanted to identify which position. So Ruan actually does it like what they do, like they take they they 
interact with the client and then they take the data from them and then they do all their analysis and comes back and say, hey, I think you need to start your warehouse uh, in, uh, let's say, Arizona, right? So, so that's the service that they're offering, but right now, uh, the retailer is actually very much inclined towards the digital development uh, in their uh, uh, back offices. So they wanted to do it in-house. So what is the solution that you guys have for this? Because they are paying for this service every time, so it's costing them. So if they think that they, they think that they have uh, the manpower to handle the, those cities, because it's one of these, they're not going to open distribution center every uh, month, right? So it's going to be like probably like three, four times in, in a year. And that depends on the growth market. And that, that's where they are ready to spend some time and then simulate and then find out they want to be behind the metrics, which is being, uh, which is very critical for making a key decision because they are not going to go back. So, so warehouse is a big commitment. So what we offered is that optimization network modeling where we partnered with Oracle and then we came up with this model. So uh, they have introduced, uh, if you have uh, been in this gym so, uh, session in the morning, they talked about that briefly. It's a new feature which is available with uh, OTM. And what we did is that uh, we actually collected all the store locations. So 2000 odd location, keyed in OTM. That, so in order to, uh, for us to find out the heat map, that's what we call it. So the heat map shows that where it is condensed, where uh, there will be more shipment, more demand, more volume. So the first step for doing this optimization modeling is to come, come up with uh, the store heat map. So this gives me an idea, okay, where is actually uh, we need to, the best portion, the best possible portion to build our new values. And then these are the two locations we keep in. This is an existing distribution center, these two points. So we factored in, okay, so this is your heat map and this is the two warehouses we already have. Okay, now I'm going to decide. So here ODM is not going to automatically suggest, okay, this is the best location for you. It basically needs our input. It says, so what we did is that uh, we are going to take a decision based on our cost per mile. That was the factor which we have used to find out which is the best possible position to identify the warehouse, right? So this is the final one, I mean we tried like here, 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 there. So what we do, how, how would we simulate this, right? So what we did, we took one week of their order, okay? And uh, thanks to the FBDI tool, we just had to export, uh, we gave the template Excel sheet to them, they uploaded the data and then uh, they provided the data and then we uploaded in OTM, so we already have uh, the orders simulation. So that was the, that week of order, we had it. It was around 5,000 order like uh, we had uploaded. So now we have their location, their existing warehouse, and we have their orders. Now the next thing to do is that give the approximate location where we wanted to open a warehouse and then run a bulk plan. So we did that. So, so this was the selected location. So we considering these three locations, now when I run the bulk plan, we got shipment options around 80 shipment we ran it for because they have a milk run based shipment we ran it for each day i'll take example for saturday because uh, weekend heavily replenishment happens because they wanted to make sure they have enough stock for the week so their heavy shipment is on during the weekend so we took the saturday shipment and then we saw that there were around like uh, 80 to 100 shipments which we created and then we started allocating cost for each and every order so how we do it? So it's basically, let's say we have, it's $2,000 for the one shipment and I have like four orders, volume based allocation. One order might occupy like 1,000 pounds and the other order might occupy like 80 pounds. So we share the value and then find out the cost per mile. Assuming this is another third distribution center we have. So we now write down, okay, these are the values. Now what we do? Okay, we actually, after that plan, if the simulation is done, then second time, we change the location and then we run again the bulk plant, again the shipments have been created and then we have the cost per mile, then we compare, okay, is this, so they, they came up with I think three options, which is the best place, uh, what, what OTM has for us, right? So we ran all these things when we given the fact they have decided the one which is selected by OTM, so which is a good thing. Okay, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure. I understand what you're doing, you're doing some iterations here, uh, trying to see the location here and there. Right. Okay. You start with the cost per mile and yeah. your initial density. Correct. 
then you say, I'm going to try to move to take a location there. Yeah. And you know that that will result in other density of the ship. So okay. the, 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 let's say the efficiency of a truck on before and after might go up, and therefore the price per mile okay. could go down. Yeah. If, if you analyze with the same cost per mile, are you then doing the right thing? Um, so, the, as I said, like there was like two things which actually factored in. One was the cost per mile and then the growth market. So, so around the place they had like a lot of opportunity to grow. They are approaching the market one by one. So, it is also has to be near to the Oklahoma and then the, the Texas. So, they wanted to open their market that side. So, that's the best thing that we can do. Right? So, we, we are not using, so there was not just one, if you take each and every issue independently, there is a best solution available, for example, Lamasa, right? so they are an expert in doing the uh, network optimization <coughs> techniques. So, but we looked everything together because also they wanted a single source of truth. So, what can this solution offer, so th there was a like, weightage given to each and every, con I mean, uh, uh, logistics the solution the, or the soft vendors uh, which we have given, we evaluated and finally they decided to go with OTM. And two factors I would say to select the location, one was obviously cost per mine and then the second one was strategic growth towards the direction in which they want to grow aggressively. So considering that fact, we were able to select and uh, that, that's all and this is the, f they are not yet in line with the OTM because they are in, not into operation planning in OTM. This is the first thing that we did. So because they wanted to also identify because they are not in like a huge demand. They are, since they are managing the fleets privately right now, they already have a plan. So we wanted to go face by face. Even the, I think that's what Jim was telling in the morning. So they, he started seeing people like, I mean the clients were going approach like one by one. So this was the third approach uh, that we took. So first one was this one, so there, and this also like gives uh, space for the end users to get them trained because we do the bulk load plan and uh, there is a, the, the, the way they get used to it, it, it becomes better every day. So then the next plan that we had is that take the orders live and then start planning so it becomes real. So that was our next uh, phase, I'll be discussing about that in the maturity model. But yeah, so what are the benefits that we get? Yeah, we. We were also able to, by utilizing this, we can perform route optimization, OTM does that. And then uh, they were uh, not using effectively the backhauls, the empty money. Even like uh, I just saw in uh, the previous session, when 19C they said that they are introducing the feature. So we factored in those things because we can efficiently handle the fleet when we are able to even uh, uh, operate in backhaul fashion like so that we reduce the empty money. So that was one one of the consideration that we had, and the other improvement, major improvement we had is that like uh, we are going to consider the delivery schedule. So let's take for example that DC is in like middle of the Midwest, like uh, let's say Chicago. So the stores which were close to that started operating in different timing than the stores at the uh, far end. So they wanted to have it's, it's few stores are 24 bar 7, few stores were shift basis. So we started factoring those things when we actually performed the load plan. That, that, that obviously brought some efficiency into the routing. And yeah, improved for fleet utilization. And they started seeing increase in the utilization of the fleet. So that because one of the third challenges uh, they had is that uh, are they having the right fleet size? The factor came into their mind because the fleet utilization started dropping. And uh, after we started route optimization, they had a feeling that fleet utilization is going up. Yeah. Okay. This is the second use case. So even before we went with OTM, they already had uh, the in the fleets the computers, onboard computers, which is provided by Verizon Connect, in order to track the location of the fleet every second. So they wanted real-time information, where the fleets are. So for example, this is the picture that we have, like it says that, okay, where are the fleets? It's provided. So with the help of uh, basically the third party, where is the connect, we were able to integrate 
where is on connect with OTM in order to bring everything to one platform, like right? OTM. Right? So we started feeding in, and then it, it gives us basically the information about where, whereabouts of the feed, which was a much needed feature because it's just not about the real location. That we add an added benefits which is provided, the mainly the vehicle health. So it, it can actually monitor the how many uh, miles the fleet is going, whether it's required maintenance or like oil change. It can it can provide vital information to keep my fleet up and running all the time. And also the driver behavior. So we we can categorize the drivers high risk, low risk based on number of incidents he had. Let's say if the speed limit is 70 mile per hour and he's constantly going as 85 mile per hour, we never know. So this can track and it would be associate the driver with the profile and then we were able to uh, categorize the drivers into different categories which helps us to understand more about the driving pattern that they have and uh, about the drivers we have. <coughs> so by monitoring the vehicle, we were able to achieve fuel consumption. How? There are two things which we do. So when we actually uh, drive the truck for like more than what it's going to give an optimized uh, efficient uh, mileage return so that we are going to monitor. So it, it acts in driver's mind. Okay, I'm being monitored. So I better follow the rule. Right? So in that way, we can save more fuel. And then the second thing, which is the private use. So let's say if the driver is like taking the truck near to his house, and we are going to pay for the fuel. So if it's being tracked in the empty mile, sometimes it happens. So when when we when they know that it's being tracked, the private usage of the fleet will reduce. These are like we are expecting this uh, fuel consumption to go low because they already said that they are able to see the change. So it, it's not like it's not going to happen within a day. So we will get to know. So benefits, GPS tracking. Yes, I can say that. Okay, where is my vehicle? Uh, if, let's say. And then there is a natural climate, inclement weather, and US is facing a lot of inclement weather. And Iowa, Chicago, Midwest is very famous for it. So when there is an incident, we can immediately identify the location of the, uh, the truck, and then it provides uh, basic information for us. And then the maintenance, as I talked about. So maintenance, as in, like, we can set some parameters saying that, okay, like, if, uh, um, let's say if the engine heat is more, like, then send me an alert because that's not quite normal. So these are like maintenance activity. And Verizon has a tie up with the dealers where like uh, if let's say if I have a truck and then like it, it can identify the alert and then even it can send it to the dealer directly. So for example, um, I would say that uh, the Lexus car that I had in US, so it actually has a direct communication with the dealer. So it, it pops up some message saying that hey, you are due for maintenance, it tells me and then tells the dealer too. So within like one day I get a call from the dealer saying that hey I think you, your car is due for maintenance. So the same thing we are able to do for the truck, reporting and analytics to identify, so transform the data into an uh, feasible information and then use that for taking key decisions. So these are the things which we can achieve by real time tracking. This is the most important part we are yet to implement. So this will be ongoing. Why? Because this is how I see the truck. When I see the truck, it is divided into three compartments. Okay. And two of them are like controlled. And they have a sensor which tracks the information. For example, the fresh is the one which they carry the vegetables. And the frozen is the frozen food. America lives in frozen food. So it's very key, uh, FDA has, has a regulations which says that okay, like uh, for, uh, in order to sell frozen food, you need to have a lot of metrics. Like, okay, these are the qualities which you need to maintain. And one of the qualities on the road. So they have a sensor installed and uh, the, it, it actually measures the information all the time, but it's not being fed anywhere. It stores but when we want, I think they have to take the manual reading and then take it from so that's a current situation. So this is where we call sensor-based logistics. Where we are going to use Oracle logistic solution along with IoT, 
with the sensors. So the sensor, what what we are envisioning, and we are going to do that is the sensor is going to keep on take measurements. So it's going to measure, and then we are going to upload it in IoT devices. Once it's been uh, uploaded in Oracle IoT devices, then OTM can very well uh, take those information and store it there. And that's where we are going to establish a connection between our vehicles and the system so that we have all the vital metrics in our hands. This is our vision. This is the use case that we have set. This complies with the regulation and it's also very uh, useful for them because uh, they know that when there's an outbreak, there's a recall of food, they at least they generate the quality report. There's a, with the mean, I mean, there's not much time spent. Like immediately, as and when record, they can take the, the quality, quality actions can be taken immediately. We can take the report and then give it to them saying that, hey, this shipment went in this truck and this truck was, this is the temperature being maintained for every hour. They can show you. And I talked about the three fleets which are already introduced. So, here we like real time alerts. We can set up, we wanted to actually, this is the vision. So, we wanted to set a threshold. Let's say, for example, um, the chicken, frozen chicken. Right? So, if it is goes beyond, like, let's say, uh, I think 30 Fahrenheit or I think even it's like less than minus 20 something, there's a range for each and every food. So, they capture that. So, if the temperature sensor meeting goes up or below, it sends an alert. So even when the truck is actually on the road, I might get an inform information saying that, hey, there's something wrong out there. Right? So with that information, I can take two actions. What's gone wrong? So I can just call the driver and then say, hey, can you check? So which basically results in uh, decreased uh, maintenance cost and my losses. We call as product and logistics losses because if, let's say if I go, it goes unnoticed for like, um, probably eight hours, if the, uh, because typically a truck will have 14 stops. That's the threshold that we have. So a truck will have 14 stops, which means maximum it can go to 14 stores, one shipment. It is quite a significant time because uh, it takes care of the loading, unloading part too. So we can immediately call the driver and then try to save the food over there. Right? So it, it can basically reduce my logistics cost and I think it basically increases my revenue. Also gives me a control tower view of like, just not my the location of the truck, even including the temperature of the truck, real time I can see. Any questions? So far? No question. Yeah, sure. Um, on the picture you say sensor edge server and also reporting and other things. Yeah. Uh, are these part of OTM? Yeah, so we are using logistics cloud here, so in our scope, and the OTBI we have, and also it comes with the BI, which is a data warehouse itself, so it depends on the customer licensing part, whether uh, what kind of data they want. If they want like more uh, real-time data, then we can use OTBI to just drag and drop, create a dashboard, and then create a report. Or like if they wanted, if they already have a, a data warehousing license, we can then the data warehouse takes the backup of uh, the information and then runs the analytics on top of that. So it's basically, we are saying that reporting is the main criteria for this whole temperature thing uh, which needs to be stored. And we are saying that it can be real time too. My second question was about the sensors. Which sensors are like installed in trucks or? Yeah, so the sensor which right now they have is just records. It's not integrated, so this is a third uh, I'll come to that implementation okay. approach there. Um, I, I'm not sure, maybe it's four kites. They might use four kites uh, sensor, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Take some water. Yeah, take some water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a step back now. Um, Sandra's just been explaining about the, the, the US retail and all the examples the project that we're doing there. Um, obviously, as you've seen in the last few slides, there's a lot of sensor IoT technology being used there. And we thought it would be good to sort of take a step back and talk to you about the way we see uh, the use of IoT devices in, in transportation or, or, or TMS situations, but also more in, more in general. 
Um, there are some definitions there which I'll, I'll leave behind, but the main thing here is uh, what we call the information value cycle. So basically what, we're, what this is about is having all kinds of sensors installed everywhere in, in itself doesn't bring you a lot. It's what you do with it. It has to bring some business value at some point. Um, you've seen in the slides uh, of Santos showing business value in all of these use cases. That's what we're trying to get to. Now, how do we do that? So basically, we separate a number of steps in a cycle, in the information loop. First thing is you have your business activities, uh, which could be shipping something somewhere, which could be handling goods in a warehouse, but it could also be any other kind of business activity that you might have. So you see some examples here that have nothing to do with transportation more in general. What we want to do is monitor, monitor these activities and we use sensors to do that. And obviously we produce the sensors produce data on, on, on what it what they are measuring. And there's a probably there's a long list of things you can measure nowadays. Um, that in itself is just data. So basically, you need to do something with that data. So the data that is going to be communicated and then analyzed with all kinds of analysis tool. It could be even be in Excel, but you can have more sophisticated ways of analyzing uh, data. Uh, that basically turns the data into information, and information gives you insights to what you can do with this. So all kinds of potential issues that, that might happen or that might have happened that need your attention or options for improvement uh, of your process. The insight will feed into the decision that decisions that you take so you can take alternative actions in case of you call it the, the weather situation in the US or there's been an accident or something is closed you need to start doing something and you do that based on, on the information that you're getting. Um, you might also consider to change things in your process itself. So you, you improve the process and then you will act again and then the cycle starts again. So that's the way you try to sort of improve uh, your business process with the help of the IT technology. Um, This picture is, is roughly saying the same thing, but it's now more aimed at um, uh, how, how do I get value out of it. If I, if I combine a few and, and relate that to, uh, to transportation, create and communicate, in other words, sense the sensing and the communicate it through a network, it's like movements, temperature, humidity, vibration, all the list of things that you can measure. You aggregate and analyze the data, and then you act, and then start, it starts again. What you're trying to do is improve all the time, and there's a number of drivers in this process that, that drive value. We start with the magnitude of things, um, the scope, what is, it, what is it that we're trying to measure, um, um, and how often am I me measuring it. Right. The scale is, okay, I'm measuring, maybe I'm measuring temperature in a truck. Is that for one truck or for 1,500 trucks? So the scale is important. Basically, any increase in any of these will drive more value for your process. Um, timing, how often do I measure things? Um, is it in time to base my next decision on? It's all right. If I get information that something is arriving late, but do I get this information in time to take a corrective action or not? Uh, latency, well, what, when was this measurement created? When is this information there? Was it done a minute ago or a week ago? And obviously, risk information should be secure, it should be reliable, it should not be hacked. All of those things drive the value of uh, steps in this in this IT cycle. Now how does this all relate to transportation, OTM and Oracle? <laughs> Coming back, so 
IoT devices you can find anywhere. There's probably thousands of applications, thousands of sensors in all kinds of business processes. Building, equipment, in manufacturing, mobile devices. Obviously, we're looking at logistics today. Um, the processes, the applications that, you, that you're looking at. And today, again, looking at fleet monitoring. How does this relate to Oracle or the SCM cloud? Well, we're talking about OTM today, but obviously there's links into uh, inventory management, warehousing, manufacturing. All of these supply chain areas um, are, are areas that you can use this IoT technology for to improve. Um, coming back to transportation, um, there's a number of additional use cases that we've identified, not only in this project or in other, in other projects as well. Um, and they, they are described in, 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 with some more, in some more detail in the appendix, which I think is going to be in the handout of, uh, of today. Um, looking at visibility, not just um, the real-time location service as to knowing where my truck is at any point in time, but you can think of a global multi-lag shipment and being able to understand where my goods are. Uh, is it in a port somewhere, on a vessel somewhere, in a truck somewhere, and, and, and what the situation is. Temperature handling, um, Santosh mentioned this already. Um, important one, to, uh, to, to, to follow and to comply with regulations. No, it's not just relevant for food. Um, there's a lot of interest in this in, in, in pharmaceuticals and medicine as well. There's a lot of rules and regulations and this is important for. Location service, we mentioned geofencing and shipment reconciliation are all examples of, of, of processes that, that can be supported with this technology. With that, I'll hand it back to Santos, who's going to dive more detail in transportation. So, thanks, Mike. So, what are the capabilities that we have for digital enablement? Right? So, we feel that these are the capabilities that we have, and uh, what we have it in future. So we have several revolutions. So let's talk, we'll talk about the future. Right? So we have autonomous driver uh, fleet. They have ongoing tests actually going on uh, in US where the fleets are driving on its own. So I think Benz is spending a lot of time on that. And then machine to machine communication and platooning are the several other uh, digital enablements we, are, we can expect in future, like RPAs and then the machine learning. Right? So th these are the future we are expecting which will add more value or more capability to the existing one that we have. So we, we have a lot of stalwarts here in the transportation. They would be pretty much uh, comfortable with all these things. My monitor of driver behavior we talked about, how uh, it's going to act on that. And then based on that we are going to profile at the driver. And then the real time transparency on the vehicle location and that's what we integrated. These are the whole capabilities and we have used few capability in uh, our client uh, uh, implementation so it would be repetitive. So monitor fuel consumption. So as part of the tracking, we are monitoring uh, how, how much mile is being uh, covered by the track and how much fuel is being used. Temperature monitoring, we saw that it's a sensor based logistics. How are we going to uh, track the tri-based tri equipment? and then the geofencing of the equipment trailer. So once I'm able to track the location, then I can set a geofence, like a boundary, and then we can set an alert when this truck leaves, probably like uh, Iowa State or Midwest, I can get an alert. So that's basically the geofencing. And the transparency on actual fleet utilization. So as we said, we, when we start performing the <coughs> route optimization, and then we knew that how much each fleet has been uh, used. And then the real-time status uh, of the fleet for the maintenance, which we talked about. So these, these were the capabilities that we can achieve by implementing the digital enablement, digital logistics, along with the OTM uh, fleet management. Is there any question? So what, what this offers for us, right? we have categorized into two basic offerings. The important part is that these offerings can be implemented by in-house experts. Let's say 
the client can so they don't uh, the consultants if the scale is huge and like if the volume is high they, they can always use the consultants to provide uh, guidance and then uh, support these kind of service offerings the two service offering is that operation efficiency so we talked about the route optimization and then fleet utilization the fleet management and then the cold chain so cold chain is the word used in uh, pharma industry because when you are transferring the medicine you need to maintain few uh, temperatures like must be so the more you are capable of handling those situation it basically increases the market i mean the, the opportunity to handle more medicines so which we it's also going to cost you for the uh, uh, compliance and the safety improvement so regulations are heavy I and mean, huge so they are going to it's going to support my regulation which is a good thing and then what else it offers so if the driver knows that he is being monitored he's going to, we are going to see an uh, discipline which is basically a safety improvement for me and the flight uh, fleet uh, analytics as we said like the maintenance and then the heat engine the vibration the gauge speed everything like we're going to monitor so it's going to provide me a very useful insight on how am I going to utilize the fleet and it's my uptime is going to be high instead of just like fleets breaking down. So the, these are the other uh, advantages we have like fatigue management and then the accident profiling, sorry accident management and driver profiling. We talked about all these things. So these are the capabilities that it offers and these are the benefits that we get out of it. right? So, if you remember, we had discussed this business challenge. The number one business challenge that they had is that uh, is my fleet is in the right size. So, by doing the fleet sizing, we can definitely give a recommendation. Okay, you need to cut down the fleets or you need to increase the fleets in order to operate more efficiently. And then uh, the maintenance cost obviously goes down. We have then private usage just goes down, so which all results in operation efficiency, which for me it saves the cost. Yeah. So this is the maturity model, so which we advised our client. So th this gives us stability, actually this reduces the risk for our client, because what we are suggesting is that like uh, the return of investment is at a high level, only at the level of three. Right? The other three, we achieve the maximum return of investment. So this is the approach that we wanted to follow. For our client, we said, okay, network modeling, we will do first because they are spending money on that, and that gives the opportunity to use OTM even before they are live with, with the live orders. And then the next thing that we did is the rollout is the load planning and route optimization. So these are the basics for me. So, Basically, we are utilizing the main feature of OTM here. Right? OTM was just not fleet management. It has a lot of things to do. So initially, we implemented the basics of that. Then we look at phase two, level two, where we'll be utilizing, integrating the IoT telematics which, with which I can do the driver profiling and uh, the safety management. It, and it also can be a logistic command center, which is a control uh, tower view, where I can see my exact locations and then the path and then the dynamic re, uh, reroute and then the inclement weather incidents all these things is possible when I uh, install the telematic IoT which which is very on connect and we have uh, the installation of that and then the third one we see as the fleet management utilization right so where uh, we, we talk about the right sizing and then the consumption fuel consumption and then maintenance optimization so we we feel that when the maturity model actually the maximum return of investment we are going to have only when we reach the level 3 and this is the approach we suggested and uh, Deloitte uh, we also believe that this is uh, risk free and it gives enough time for the user to, to get trained on the system and uh, they have better control of what they are doing. So this is our approach, I think this is the last slide, so any questions here? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining.